Hey, this is Horner, and this is uh, 2014 Mechanics Exam AP Physics C number three. And we're going to take a look at what's going on with this person right here. So the surface that this person on is on is ice. And so we know that this is ice. And there's a disc that this person is uh, on. And what they're going to do is they're going to throw a ball this direction. So you see that here. And when they throw the ball in that direction, then they should go in the opposite direction. So notice that this is not rotating. Uh, it is not rotating at all. Instead, it's going to travel in a straight line. So remember, that is what we call translational motion. Uh, so we're not going to go any time in a circle until we get to the back page. So this one is just merely, really just moving in a straight line. So the first thing uh, that we need to do is kind of look at all the variables here. We have a large circular disk. It does have a mass of M. Um, and it is initially stationary as a radius R also. So let's go ahead and put an M in there. And it is on that horizontal icy surface, a person of mass M over 2. So this person has a mass of M over 2. So M person is half the mass, uh, is standing on the very edge of the disc. Without slipping on the disc, the person throws a large stone of mass m over 20. So there's our third mass at an initial speed of vo at a height of h. And so that ball will kind of come out and then fall. So it uh, does have some projectile motion. Um, and we remember that the speed in the x will remain constant but the speed in the y will increase. So this will just kind of remain constant, and this one will increase. Uh, let's see, and uh, the height is h, and it is thrown in a radial direction. So radial just means it's going, uh, just going here um, along with the radius, so hence the word radial. So we're just throwing it straight away from the disk, not tangentially, but radially. Um, the coefficient of friction between the disk and the ice is equal to mu, so we've got that. All the velocities are measured relative to the ground. The time it takes to throw the stone is negligible. So we're not worried about throwing it off. Instead, we're just worried about how long it's going to take for the path to be able to go through. Um, the uh, question does ask for all the answers to be in terms of M, capital R, V O H mu and then fundamental constants like gravity is appropriate. They want us to first drive an expression for the length of time it takes for the stone to hit the ice. So remember in projectile motion, the x direction doesn't have really anything to do with the time to hit the ground. It would if the speed was high enough that it would orbit, then it would never hit the ground. So I guess that would kind of be a moot point. But uh, the time for it to hit the ground is pretty easy. If you remember, we have delta x is equal to VOT plus one half a t squared. And we're going to think about this moving uh, down. Okay, so we're going to say down is going to be our positive direction. If that's true, then we just have the change in the y, which is actually equal to the height, is equal to zero plus one half of gravity times time squared. So remember, our original velocity here is in the y direction. And uh, now what we'll do is go ahead and solve for t. So to solve for t, we're going to multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by g. So I get 2h over g. And then that is equal to t squared. But we'll go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And so we end up with the square root of 2h over g. So doing that little bit of really easy work, you get one point for the initial equation and then essentially one point for plugging everything in correctly and then having your answer in terms of m, r, v, o, h, mu and the fundamental constants. Assuming that that disk is free to slide on the ice, they want us to think about and derive an expression for the speed of the disk and person immediately after the stone is thrown. So in this one, we got to kind of think about what's happening. We notice that this is a momentum problem now. And we have the person throwing the ball in this direction, which means that there is a uh, opposite uh, force going in the opposite direction. 
And so this person and the uh, disc will move to the left while the ball moves to the right. So we are conserving momentum in this part. So we have to make sure that we do that. Um, we have to make sure that we let the AP people know that are grading your test that we understand that the original, and in fact, let's go back to blue here, the original momentum is equal to the final momentum because we don't have any exterior uh, forces at all uh, or external forces. So our original momentum should be equal to our final momentum. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about this. We know that uh, there is no original momentum of this guy. Uh, they're just, he's just kind of standing there. Um, so it's an explosion, which means that we have the mass of the rock, okay, times, or of the stone. So let's just put stone, the mass of the stone times the uh, velocity of the stone. This is the final velocity. Plus, and then we have the mass of the disc and the person. So we're going to put two times the velocity of both. The mass of the stone is m over 20, and then it stays going that same speed. So we do know kind of what that speed is. Plus, so we're going to call it vo, plus now we have the mass of the disc is what this is, and then we have the mass of the person, and they are both going in the opposite direction at another speed that we're going to call it v. So let's go ahead and do some math here. Let's move, uh, let's move everything to the other side. So when we do that, we are going to have um, m over 20 times vo, and that is negative. Well, let's, yeah, let's make that negative. And then that is equal to m plus m over 2 and that is times v. So we need to combine our terms here. Uh, if I have m over 2, that's 2 over 2 here. So that would be 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2. So this is going to be 3 halves mv is equal to, uh, and then we have a negative 1 over 20 mvo. Our m's totally cross off, so we don't have to worry about those anymore, and we end up with v being equal to, um, oh, this is 1 over 20, uh, being equal to negative 1 over 30 vo. So we just uh, multiply both sides by 2 over 3, so this side is by 2 over 3, uh, we get 2 over 60, which is 1 over 30, and so now we know the speed of the disc and the person immediately after the stone is thrown. So this is the speed of the stone, this is the speed of the person and the disc, and notice that it is very small compared to the speed of the stone. All right, cool. Now, a uh, thing that we need to do is let's figure out where all these points are. Uh, conservation of momentum is really important, and then uh, doing our original equation is super important. So this part right here is worth one point. And then substituting, doing all that algebra, and then getting our final answer is a point. For letter C, uh, they want us to go through now, and they want us to find an expression for the time it will take the, do the disc to stop sliding. So remember, the disc and the person now are moving across the ice. So there's the person, the stone is over here now on the ice, uh, and it's uh, not moving anymore. And so this is going this way, and we know that the force of friction is moving is uh, in this direction. So that's the force of friction. There are no other forces acting on this thing other than mg down, and then straight up would be fn, and those are equal and opposite. So if we do a sum of the forces in the x direction, that should be equal to uh, m times a. Sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to 0. That would be n minus mg is equal to 0. So n is equal to mg. That'll be important here in a second. 
Sum of the forces in the x direction is just the force of friction, and that is equal to ma. We know that the force of friction itself, so force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. So this is mu times the normal force, and that's equal to ma. But remember the normal force we said was mg, and that is equal to ma. So at this point, we can cross off the m's. We know that a is equal to mu times g. So now that we've done that, we get one point. So all that is worth one point. The next part of this is going ahead and using a kinematics equation to kind of find out what's going on. So we have v final is equal to the original plus a times t. Our original speed is that speed that we know uh, the person in the disc are moving at the time that we just have let go of the rock and there's no more force acting on it. And we said earlier that that is negative 1 over 30 VO. And uh, to that we, well, we know that the final velocity is 0. So we're going to add to that uh, our acceleration, which is mu g. So this is mu times g and then we multiply times t. Now we need to solve this for t, so that'd be 1 over 30 vo is equal to mu gt, and we're going to divide both sides by gt, um, and uh, I'm sorry, by mu g, and we're going to end up with vo over 30 times mu times g. So we get our second point for having the kinematics equation. We get our last point for having everything inside correct. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, part D. So if we want to do part D, let's just move this on down. Part D now is where we have our rotational motion. So now this thing, when we throw the rock in this direction, so this is a top-down view, we know that we are going to rotate in this direction. So what's going to be conserved here? Well, earlier we had linear momentum. Now we have angular momentum. So our initial angular momentum should be equal to our final angular momentum. We know that our uh, momentum in a straight line is equal to mass times the radius times the velocity. So this would be linear. And if we need angular, this is just equal to i times omega. So why do we have both of these? Well, the reason we have both is because we have a rock that's going in a straight line. And then this is going to be for our person and our platform. So this is going to be for the rock, and this is for the person and the platform. So that's why we have to have so many. Uh, so essentially, we've got to put all of the momenta together, and we know that the sum of all the momentum should be equal to zero. So the one that is uh, linear is going to be the stone, so that's the mass of the stone times the radius of the stone to the center here. So we've got to be careful that we don't take the radius of the actual rock, but of the disk. And then we have the velocity of the stone plus we have the moment of inertia of the disk times the angular velocity of the disk plus the moment of inertia of our platform times the uh, angular velocity of that platform. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and plug everything in. This is going to be m over 20 times big R, because that was what they told us our, uh, the radius was earlier. And then we have the uh, speed of the stone. Plus, now we have m, uh, oops, you know what, we don't want to add. This is going in the opposite direction, so we do want to subtract it. So this will be minus, and then here we have m r squared over 2, because remember this is uh, actually, yeah, this is for the disk, so we have m r squared over 2 times omega plus m over 2 times r squared times omega. So this is the rotational inertia of the disk. Okay, So that's why it's mr squared over 2. 
Um, it's not because the mass is divided by two, it's because that is the rotational inertia of the disk. The, um, for the person, we have m r squared, okay, times omega, but our m is m over two. So that's the difference between the m over two here and the m over two over here. So this is, once again, that's the moment of inertia, and this is the mass of the person. So we're treating this person as a point particle. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just move everything on the correct side. So this would be m over 20 times r times vo is equal to m r squared over 2 times omega, because that's the moment of inertia, plus m over 2 r squared omega. Uh, what we can do now is we have m uh, r squared over 2 times omega. We have basically the same thing here, m over 2 r squared times omega. And so that would be a half and a half. So now we're going to end up saying that this is equal to m r squared omega. So now we've got two things, one on one side, and we have one on the other. And remember, what we're looking for is the angular speed immediately after the stone is thrown. So we're going to switch colors to help us. Um, we still have m over 20 times r times vo, and we have omega on this side. We want to keep the omega, so we're going to divide both sides by m r squared. So this is divided by m r squared and that's equal to omega. So now we need to go through and cross some things off, so the mass disappears. This r disappears, that one stays, uh, on the, just this one, and then the square goes away. So now our omega is equal to the, the uh, speed of the stone divided by 20 times r. So lots of work for that one. Uh, points, where do points come from on this one? So one of them is for substituting the angular, well, actually the first one is for recognizing that we have both linear and uh, rotational uh, momentum. The next thing is we've got to make sure that we have the right variables for each one of the three different momenta. So the one that's linear for the stone and then the two that are angular momentum for the uh, disk and for the person. So essentially, um, they, they're giving you a point here, here, and here, but only if you go through all the other math to get the answer down on the bottom. So it's kind of a backwards way of doing it, but they want to make sure that you understand that all three of these add up to be zero, and because this one's going in one direction and the other two going in the other, um, we need to subtract those. So ideally, I think I need to put parentheses here. So that's one thing you probably need to go back and do, or just put a negative in this spot. So either way, uh, make sure you do that. So that part's worth four points. The very last part of this is uh, going through and trying to identify if the person now stands at this point. So they stand at R over 2, and they toss that ball this way. Uh, they want to know, is the angular speed of the disk immediately after throwing the stone from this new position greater than, less than, or equal to the speed found here? So uh, it should be obvious, kind of what's going on, that that speed should be less than. So you get a point for checking a box, which is always weird to me, but you do. Um, it should decrease, okay? So one thing you need to do is just say, should decrease the stone angular momentum since r is smaller and we know it's r over 2 than uh, original. Okay, so that is a point. And then finally, our last point here is the, uh, there is a decrease in the person's rotational inertia, basically for the same reason, since uh, r is one-half r original. 
And that is really the end of this problem. So you should have all 15 points here. So there's three and four is seven. Uh, here we've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Not a bad problem.